I'm going to call the meeting public works to order. Uh, we'll start with roll call. Alderperson Heidemann? Here. Alderperson Ramey? Here. Alderperson Rust? Here. Alderperson Salazar? Here. And I'm Alderperson Decker, so I'm here. We will start with the public meeting. Public meeting is underway. 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 Public meeting
that's largely typically natural or park. So this is it. It was held for future development. So it is natural, um, and I understand. You know, it's it's probably great habitat. <laughs> so uh, especially with a nice uh, source of food from the farm uh, immediately west in this area. One of the problems is that um, we don't necessarily have the resources as a city municipality to manage uh, hunting on, on property such as this. So that was one of the concerns that we, you know, it's easy, you know, just to continue to say, hey, we don't get a lot of these requests and we don't have a lot of resources. So um, sorry, you know, look beyond the city to areas to, to ask for permission to hunt. Uh, that was the premise of this. Um, and, you know, our recommendation is to pr pretty much continue along that, that path that, you know, um, yeah, we understand there's probably wildlife and probably that there's an opportunity to, you know, hunt, but being that it is in the city and we have a history of denying these types of requests in the past, we feel that, you know, we want to be consistent and it's, uh, no disrespect to Mr. Cotter, but I'm sure he's an avid outdoorsman. He's done everything proper. He's, he's followed all the proper channels to get requests. We do have a process in place that he's followed. And we do, you know, it's up to this board here to say, you know, we think it is time to continue this or change it or we've kind of had this as a long-standing practice we're going to continue along those lines but i think since mr cotter has has uh, joined us this evening i think it would be good to have him off, have an opportunity to, to explain his his side as well yeah if i may that'd be okay so that parcel of land that you surrounded with <laughs> the woods it butts up to uh, riverdale country club it's kind of all around the corner the half of that um, that David was talking about to the east is owned by uh, the Kohler Trust, not Kohler as in K-O-H-L-E-R, K-O-L-L-E-R, okay? So that's private land that's there, and there is, um, I know him personally, a, a guy that hunts on that side mm -hmm. of the land. And so my, I guess my, my question or the part that I wanted to bring, if we talk about policing the woods that we would allow a hunter, it's the same police that would come to that side of the city land. It's the same DNR that we have that polices all of our public lands and and not private lands as well um, in the state of Wisconsin. So we don't, I mean, never are you gonna have a city policeman patrolling the, the, the forests or anything, but if there would be anybody that would see anybody with any of our properties that would be hunting, that would be baiting illegally, et cetera, et cetera, you would still call the the DNR warden like that's exactly who would be able to issue citations, et cetera, et cetera. So there are policing measures in place for for all um, properties uh, in the state of Wisconsin. Um, the the other point that I just wanted to make was that you know the city is growing its footprint, obviously with the addition of the Gartman Farm. I'm sure that there could be potential expansion in the future. There's going to be a lot of rural property you know, in Sheboygan that potentially would be acquired. And all I'm asking is that just because we've had a, a time old acceptance that we're just not, not gonna allow hunting on any city property, should there not be at least a reasonable discussion on particular plots such as this that has been idle? There are no houses and things that or at least are gonna be imminently putting, you know, putting up in, in that area. Um, should there at least be a discussion on a case by case basis to allow somebody the access to, you know, what could be, obviously maybe fruitful i have no idea but at least recreational it's land that is there that's vacant and as long as it's uh being used in the proper fashion um i just don't see why there's not a a, a reason to um allow that because you know as david stated i don't think that there's too many people asking for permission all of the time because you do have to go through the proper channels so that's okay um well, I respect you and appreciate you bringing this forward the way you did. I mean, sure. You did the proper channels, you did the proper paperwork, you've done all the things like that. Um, I will say that I am a little bit concerned about opening this up because the problem is, is who's going to police, 
you know, you've got permission, then who's the, then there's going to be you know, other people there. All of a sudden, who's who's there, you know, who's not. So I am a, I'm a little concerned um, with it. I um, I have I have I have some reservations about it. I'd like to hear what the rest of the committee has to say. Zach, how big is the plot? Just mm -hmm. like how many acres? Uh, I I, this is this is probably close to 20 acres, the wooded section, and okay. there's another 20 over here, so it's 40 total. Okay. The plot that I had requested was not the 20 acres on kind of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was not really the farmland. More it, there's two. There's actually there's three parcels that are very long along Stall Road going north. Yep, one, two, and three, and really. To get up all the way up to where Riverdale is, there's yeah, up in that car like that. That's my house is right on the backside. It's on Sherwood Drive, right, right there. Yeah, it's right on the backside of this property, which is what uh, was very intriguing to me. Obviously, I'm right there, and so um, uh, you don't worry. I don't see very many deer there, huh? but <laughs> that's why it's very intriguing to me. And I started looking in terms of well. Who, how do you get permission? Like, what exactly is the process of doing it? So I don't have so much, per, per, uh, you know, the the farmland itself isn't that big of a deal to me. It would be the actual wooded section, which there are two uh, two um, parcels uh, that are inside of there. That would be of, you know, you know, if I was going to go and do it, the only access to that would be then right off of Stall Road, which is you can see. I think you pointed that right in the beginning. That would really be the access to the right of that, oh right, right into there. Yeah, that that would be really your your access point. That would be um, down into there. Other thing being, you know, hunting is pretty widely accepted in Sheboygan, so I don't think it raises too many um, red flags in terms of policing. All I say is that what why couldn't it be on a, a case by case basis? Of course, when you start developing and putting houses and putting residential things on the Gartman property, well. Then if I sit in this board meeting come uh, next year or two years from now, yeah, I would expect to have a little bit different answer. But until then, as long as the property sits vacant, um, I, you know, I would think it would at least be able to be um, uh, used for different purposes if it would meet, you know, your approval. And so then you're asking for those months. So the months during November, December, and January, asking for three-month period. Yeah. Um, so th the idea was I wasn't exactly sure how all this works. So um, uh, bow hunting, and it would not be for anything gun, even though I mean you can discharge a um, a gun in the city of Sheboygan with certain rules obviously in place. But this would specifically be for crossbow hunting. It lasts uh, into in Sheboygan County on the east side of I-43 until January 31st. And so that's why I brought up a few months. Um, I managed to rupture my Achilles tendon back in July. And so I was just walking a couple of weeks ago. So I figured I'm not gonna be able to like get out like right now and do this. But I thought, well, if, if we can at least have a discussion, I would at least go probably in that November through January timeframe. And then after that season's over, I wouldn't have any reason to, you know, to occupy or be in a city owned land anyway. Um, my question, so there, there's no violation within the city ordinances where you could not shoot a crossbow in the city of, I mean, I can't go down A Street and shoot a crossbow. You have to be, there, there's certain criteria within the city ordinance. You have to be so many yards away from any other property in a certain distance. And also in that, in that plot of land, that's all in the city. There's not a private property owner there that's not in the city that he could hunt. On that property, but they, he, yes, he did talk about the land immediately right. adjacent mm -hmm. there. It's private, private, and then yes. you, could, you could contact mm -hmm. him and you could hunt oh, we that tried. <laughs> so he, so it's, we he tried. He doesn't want you hunting. That so, that parcel of land that was actually, from what I understand, the beginning of the um, of, of an annex that was the first one, kind of the balloon and string. And so, that is it used to be Town of Wilson, which is now. Um, city is on that side and there was a while there that you could not hunt within city limits and I don't know when that has changed but it uh, from everything that I've read it certainly is now that you can within city limits but you have to be for instance away 100 yards from a habitable structure which 
there is no habitable structure within that plot besides being very close to saw road which i never would be anyway that would be anywhere close to uh, uh 100 yards 200 yards probably even 300 yards mm -hmm. from uh um, um from a point of habitat from any type of shed any type of dwelling yeah. put it that way i if i recall and i i'm trying to recall as best as i can when this when the, the land here was annexed for the golf course there was part of the state park that was included and that's now in the city and because of that it's huntable that's why the hunting and city limits was changed and it was defined better that you're able to hunt now because prior to this we really didn't have any area any area hunt. that was even close to being able to be defined such as this so when we changed that that then now opened up the next possibility of anything city owned that would be available that would be public land um, Right now, it's all posted, no hunting. We had, we had originally when this was, you know, brought in, people were hunting on it, and it was not controlled very well, so it's posted that way. Um, and, and other than this most recent, we haven't had, um, you know, many requests because it has been posted for many years already. Um, no public, no hunting. I'd so, like to say that it's probably about forty guys that work here that that would love to you know hunt on land like this and then they just know that it's really not something that's no. probably going to happen so they've never gone through the they've never did what you did and got through the whole sequence so right. they they know where the public land is too and joe can i go on well here's your process you know and that, so hence my my concerns with this is you know not to once once you let the genie out of the bottle you're going to have all of a sudden well you let him do it so why can't i do it why, and how, then how many people can we say the next thing you know we have 30 people on that land hunting you know that's that's the, that's the issue that i kind of worry about you know you're going to have your you know i don't necessarily you know fault you on i i, I you probably you probably look out your back door and see that nice buck and go why can't i hunt this it would be no. nice and i you know and if we, if we could limit it to say that but I, I i don't think we can we're gonna give it to you we have to allow anybody and i think we get too many people well and that uh, mr chair that that raises a good point and joe i kind of yeah, you know, I, yeah i did completely forget about that and i guess in 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 a sense of fairness if if the committee so desired to to open it up i i would suggest then that there be a process to to allow for applications and then if there's so many that you know too many applications then it would be like like a lottery in other words yeah. we would pick and then out of out of let's say there's 20 people but we're only going to allow five uh, five permits for this area that you know so then it's, there's a sense of fairness yeah uh, i don't want it to be a first come first serve you know sure i with that david you'd probably be having to do background checks too i mean there, yeah. it's going to be a process yeah right and you know do you have you know your license are you you know i i'm not i don't know if there's if for I'm not a I'm not a i'm not a crossbow hunter but is there a zone that you have to have a permit for hunting in this zone for a crossbow and do you have your you know so we'd have to uh, it's reliable real yeah that's that, that's my concerns um, yeah uh, uh, can you look, expand on when you said it was people were hunting there before but then we had to put the signs up because it wasn't being managed well or whatever can you just kind of talk about that a little bit well, yeah initially when, when it was it was sold and vacated the farm it wasn't being farmed anymore and it was just natural People, you know, within the area, if, if they may know other farmers and they may have been hunting and then they just start migrating into areas, um, it happens. Um, and we, we just, people were saying, hey, uh, we probably need to be putting up signs. And it's, it's interesting, I, if, if I recall, I think Mr. Garfield even asked, who's farming this, hey, can I get in there and hunt? And I, we've told him no over the years too. We say we just because it's in the city, and we don't yeah. on city property. We just have 
kind of had a history of saying no. Um, but there's yet yeah, not there's some very valid points. I mean, if, if 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 we start expanding and we have these natural areas and they're going to be natural for you know decades and not being used, then what do we classify them as? Do we do we do we allow recreational? Um, activity, hiking and other activities. But then if you start allowing that recreation activity, then eventually, all right, now is it a park? Because you've been allowing people to access it and recreate on it and do certain things. Then somebody comes along and says, well, wait a second. You, you can't, can't develop that. that now because, because that's a park. Yeah, so that, it, I, these are all, it's, it's, a, it's more complicated than saying, yeah. yes. That's, uh, that's that's my feeling but it is more complicated than saying yes but i think we're going to say we would be opening up to uh to a lot of people that's, that's just my yeah, it's so clear, clarifying so it's it's not about opening the land up for anyone to hunt what, what's, what's what the issue is right now is giving you him the license so it would only be one person hunting on that land and what you're saying is that it would open up with other people who could come forward or if we said yes to this, that means it's open for anyone to go hunt. Well, we said yes, I think it would be that right. we, would, we would get I think, other people that come forward for permission also, I think, because like you said, there's a council, as as council as approval, as for as council as approval for each person. For each so, person. Yeah, so that's another thing to look at, is it's gonna be individual council approval for everybody yeah. that wants to put in, so. Mm -hmm. We've never done I think that's so something stated. we've never done before. This will still go up to council. Yeah. Okay. This would go to council. For, it comes, if we if we would send it, it would go to council. And council. Yeah. Yeah. And this isn't the only area. I mean, this is the request for this area. We've had other requests for this other isn't areas. The first time we've had a request. I remember right. So there's there's in the past, haven't we? Uh, last year we had a request for right here. This yes. This area right here is a big square of you know an outlot wetlands now this is a much smaller but there is an area in the middle that technically you could hunt <laughs> that and someone requested and they, again it was probably i think it was a neighbor that was in this area or over here and says hey i want to go back in here it's city land you mind if i hunt in the last year i think you said no the difference being there is that you're talking probably a distance of maybe 300 yards wide from the house that would be on the west to yep. what that would be on um oh god uh, lakeshore drive yeah whereas that would be similar to when gartman uh, farm starts to be developed right like yeah of course you're not going to be having bolts be flung through the air uh you're going to get people nervous you're going to have all sorts of stuff um, I can completely see why a smaller section like that, like we're all sitting around a table, I think we can all agree like, yeah, something like that in a little tiny spot with residential all over the place. Yes. Okay. I'd be a little bit more nervous about letting some people on versus a place that is wide open and rural. With that, I'll, I'll let it die. That's, that's fine. I'll listen to you guys. But yeah, there are distinct differences and probably not too many properties like that that have that amount of you know rural woods put it that way so is the golf course used at all in the winter months for like skiing cross country skiing or anything recreational or is, you know mm -hmm. not really no it, it, years ago it, years ago it was you can drink at the bar yes <laughs> good to know <laughs> <laughs> So at one point as well, just another area, we, we owned the Shookert land when it was annexed. Sure. And prior, I mean, we held it for, I don't know, probably, I don't know, close to 10 years. Yep. And it was just city land. And we had many, many requests to go back in here and hunt again. Um, this is probably about 40-ish acres. Um, it was, we didn't allow it. But now we've, now it's conservancy, so that really takes it off the table. Yes. But they've had problems with people actually trying to go back right. there. Uh, yeah, I mean, across the street by Estee Park, yeah. the new land that Milgram got, we have that problem all the time. It's such a little spot. We have to be like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> so well, just, well, just I mean, well, a point of reference. I'm just trying to. Money. There's children. Yeah.
So, what's your thoughts? Anything? It's a hard one, you know, because I, I, I get, I see both sides. Um, but my thoughts are, if yeah, I mean, we're saying a lot like, okay, but then once the garden farm is developed, and that's the plan, right? Mm -hmm. That is the plan. Um, how hard is it now then to take that away? You know, it's the back and forth and back and forth that kind of doesn't seem clean. Um, My, my feelings are is if we were to open it up, if we would allow this gentleman to have it, we would also then have to open it to other people. We would have to have a procedure, like they've said. We would have to almost have a lottery and things like that. Do we want to get into that business? Yeah, right. And then other, like, how many hundred? We only, it has to be time. fair. It has to be has fair. To be it fair. Has to be, can't just be, you know, the first one that came and requested gets it not to be, you know, but that's how that's how it, it should be, you know, because there, there, there are going to be other people. I think as soon as this, if this would be approved for him, I think you would have more people coming forward and say, I would like to do the same. And, we're, and what, then, we, then we would have to establish a perimeter of how many people we can allow in there and things like that. We'd have to set some kind of boundaries aside, you know, rules on it. So can I ask a question? Why do we even have a process for people to apply if we've never allowed people to hunt on the land to begin with? Because it was, I think it's been fairly new with the areas, especially with that was associated with the um, the annexation. So people did get to hunt there. Yeah, because that's state owned. They have a process, and it's it's in the city, and they have a process. Ah, uh, I think you know it 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 was a matter of wait. I, you know, I, I don't know about how the ordinance was changed and how it was, you know, I wasn't an author on it. Yeah. So I, I, I'm trying to, I don't want to put how it was developed or whatever. I, we really never had lands that were type, quite frankly eligible to be hunted because most of the lands that are natural and large are park yeah. or yeah. recreational. Yeah. And we didn't really have something like this, that th this large that. So did we look at the or do we anybody can we look at the ordinance? Can somebody look that up? Sure. To sort of understand why. I guess I'm just curious of like if we wouldn't have allowed it to begin with, why are we even allowing I guess I'm that's I don't want to waste Zach's time, right? Like I, I guess it would we would say don't don't even have a process, don't submit anything at all, because it's not an option. And that's that's well. That's been our history. We've said it hasn't been an option, but uh, quite frankly, we haven't had a request specifically for this area that really would be eligible. I mean, under the criteria, let's put it that way, the way it's defined now. Yeah. Prior to this, you're right. Um, Sorry. Has anybody ever been arrested for hunting on there? Uh, I wouldn't say arrested, but people were like, hey, get out of here. You can't. We had, again, when we, I, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, when we had the, the business center that was, you know, it was, we city owned it. We were leasing it for farm and some kids, <clears throat> some, you know, went out there and set up their uh, geese decoys and were hunting. And uh, I got the call and met the sheriff out there. And, you know, we just said, hey, you know, we could have cited them. We could have, I, but my point was, hey, they, they were, you know, they've had permission from the farmer to the north that was allowing them and they just kind of might you know it, it, not everything has a fence in a property line so every time you look at farmland you can go from a plot of farm when they go across 
property lines. So, you know, hey, now they know. But, uh, okay, discharge carrying weapons. Here you go. Uh, gotta get the E, A, B, C, E, E, E. Uh, here we go. Conditions of discharge within the boundaries of the city. Shotgun, muzzle, or roll, crossbow, or other like weapon instrument may be discharged within the city, but only under the following conditions. So then it goes here. Uh, number two, as I said, yes. Okay, again, these, uh, no, they can't be discharged within 20 yards, 200 yards, excuse me, of a boundary adjacent plat at subdivision, um, or 100 yards of a habitable building or adjacent property, unless the owner of such adjacent property um, has given written permission to be closer. In no case, uh, they can be discharged, projectile, leaving fine over any other property. Okay, uh, down here, number two. Yes, again, um, pretty much the same. Fine regulations, no discharge 100 unless the owner. So the, the ordinance is about discharging hunting in the city, discharging firearm. a firearm yes. is it, but within then, the boundaries. And right. then, then it says prohibited areas and then now, not be discharged from parkland or any land not owned by the person. Unless written permission is obtained. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Because, be, because this land isn't parkland, mm -hmm. it's just land owned by the city, he is now asking written permission from yep. the city. Yep. Yep. Now, okay. again, it's the right thing to do. We follow yep. everything, right? But but again, I, I we we have... The, the, I guess, ultimately, maybe to clarify this better, it should be prohibited areas, any parkland or city owned lands are not available. In other words, if he, if, if, if that land, like the Gartman farm, as I, and when I'm using it as, as right there was just in the city and owned yet by the Gartmans and not by us, he could easily get permission and hunt that, all the, that based on this, because even though it's in the city, it's a large enough track of land, it's far enough away from a subdivision as well as other areas, he could safely discharge those types of weapons that are in the ordinance. Okay. So that's the, probably the big thing here is it doesn't, it prohibits parks, it just not other lands and we're an owner of those lands. So therefore, technically, we just have to permission. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So probably ultimately to clarify this, if 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 the committee, this committee so desires to continue on that past practice of not allowing hunting on city lands, regardless if it's park or owned by the city, I think then it would be it would be basically you could you could say we're gonna deny this request and then ask this committee would do a report committee to have this ordinance changed to reflect that moving forward. Or do we say yes and then change it so it says? <laughs> if, then if you do say, yeah, then that's the other thing. You could say, we think this is good. If the city has land that the city owns and it's in the size that is allowed to be huntable, then I think what you would need to do is make an ordinance and then have a policy developed so that it can pro be properly managed. Because right now, again, um, it's kind of like a first come first serve and not a lot of people have come because of the, the answer has been, if they call, it's not happening. Or if they ask, no, we're not, we're not gonna let you do it. Yeah. It's kind of been handled administratively in a lot of cases. They never really gotten to this point. Until again, again, I think this was updated uh, in 19. General ordinance in 2019 and that 2020. Mm -hmm. It's right around that the annexation period. Mm -hmm. So prior to this, it was you know 17 and 18 and other things. So okay. okay. Comments, questions, any more further? What's your thoughts? Um, possibly that we would get a retaliation from the other property owner that we allow him to hunt there 
and then he's going to say, what are you doing? I have, I own this property right here. Now you've got a guy hunting right next to my property. Can, would he be coming to the city saying, listen, why are you allowing this to do this guy to do that? Because he's afraid, you know, it's like that. Can I go on your farmland? We get at my, my mom's. They ask her, they call us up. They say, can you go on? We go, go ahead. It's, it's not a problem, but it's not in the city. Right. So I, I guess I'd like to be able to be able to respect the rights of the other property owners in there. Because if we make a change like this, um, that's we, we, right, right now, we would probably have to go in there and, and actually start posting the property lines yeah. that, you know, yeah. right now it's, yeah, it's not. I guess my, my thoughts on this is, is that, again, we, this would be an expense to the city because we, we would have to go in and take out the signs. We'd have to have our guys go in there and take the no hunting signs out because they'd be hunting. We would have to mark the area that's that is the city boundaries we'd have to have markings and some kind because we have to it has to be boundary we boundary right so there would be an expense to the city i think I, i'm just afraid that we're going to be opening it up pandora's box i just think that that's my opinion on it so i, I, I my thoughts are that we should that this should be filed that's my thoughts I'm looking for, I guess, some kind of a motion on this file, or to, or to move forward, or, or to. Is it, is it moved to file or moved to deny? I think it's moved to deny, right? It, both would do that. Yeah, if file, 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 file it is, is denied. Yeah, it's filed as denied. I'm, I move to file. Okay. Second. I will second. Motion's made to file. Any other discussion? On okay, it? so it, say we um, remove the file list, uh, then the next process would be changing this ordinance. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so if we allowed him to do that, mm -hmm. and then we change the ordinance, he's got what one year that he can do that, or it, yeah, or would that would that if we change the ordinance right after he got his bow ready, that he would no longer be able to. No, no, no. 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 we would change, change the ordinance. It would be done. It would yeah. be done, and it would affect. Yeah, this request that he has yes. for this time period. Okay. All right. Uh, any other discussion? Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is filed. Okay. Um, Thank you. There we go. Is a fruitful discussion, and now we need to change okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, next meeting date is November 15, 2022. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Motion is made second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.